This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Biologists have patched together the genes of six mice to produce this single offspring. More astonishing is the mouse created from only one parent. One day, it may become possible to make exact replicas of human beings. The chance of twins being born is about 1 in 80. The likelihood that they be identical is less than 1 in 200. Wherever they appear, they are startling and fascinating. But if twins are rare, the odds against identical triplets are astronomical. These boys are lucky to have been born in the 20th century. Among primitive peoples, twins and triplets were feared and rejected. The mother bearing such an animal like litter was thought to be accursed. One or all of the children were frequently killed. Today, such children are nature's oddity, but in the near future, they could become a familiar sight. There's a good chance that science will learn how to create identical human beings, or clones, as they are called. The prospect both intrigues and alarms people. There's a feeling that people created by laboratory manipulation would be less than human a sense that something evil may be on the horizon. Biologically, however, clones would be much like identical twins, triplets, or quadruplets. These 10-year-olds form one of a dozen sets of identical quadruplets in the country. The boys do look remarkably alike, though there are differences and more will become apparent as they get older. Their physical similarity and emotional closeness often blinds people to the fact that genetic identicals are separate individuals. They may look alike, but they do not necessarily think or act alike. Well, it's very close, and uh, there's a very, very strong bond, and uh I just can't describe it to you. We're very much alike, and then we also differ a great deal. Our personalities are entirely different, and um, emotionally, possibly my sister is the stronger of the two of us. Physically, I say my sister is stronger than I am. She moves quicker. Oh, my sister does it in a very... Uh, big manner and uh, much more high style action. Oh, uh, maybe a little more noise. <laughs> well, this is Rob and he has a thinner face. And this is Ray and he has a wider, wider jaws and wider face. Rich has a rounder head. They walk and run completely different. And then their, their body is different. It's three different kids. The Birning twins are one of two pairs of identical twin gynecologists in the country. I think I'm a little more sedate, a little more likely to, to let nature take its course, whereas my brother is a little more aggressive, a little more likely to rock the boat and get a little upset a little more quickly than, than I do. Provocative or maybe volatile is the word that I like to use. Twins are not clones, but they are living examples of what clones could be. If we are to rise above the superstition of primitive tribes who killed twins, we must not think of clones as either less or more than human. Genetically, 
A pair of human clones would be the same as a pair of identical twins. They would, however, not originate in the same way. The conception of a normal baby begins with an egg from the mother, which carries her genetic instructions, and with sperm from the father, carrying his genetic makeup. When the sperm fertilizes the egg, the genetic information from the father joins that from the mother, and the cell begins to divide. Occasionally, the cell mass splits apart at an early stage. The separate halves continue dividing. They become identical twins, alike down to tiny details of face, hair, and teeth. It is believed that a person's skin and other body cells carry all the genetic instructions needed to duplicate that person. The process of cloning someone would begin with any one of their cells and any fertilized human egg. The egg nucleus containing its genetic instructions would be removed and the nucleus from the donor cell inserted. After implantation in any woman's womb, the altered egg would divide and grow in the usual way. It would become the younger identical twin of the original cell donor, his or her clone. All of this is theoretically understood. Human cloning may be possible. But for lower forms of life, cloning is a reality. Some orchids clone themselves naturally. Others need a little help from man. At the Rod McClellan Company, south of San Francisco, growers are in the business of cloning beauty. They cut a tiny sliver of cells from the shoot of a mature plant and put the pieces in nutrient. After weeks of constant agitation, the cells grow into green clumps. The clumps grow into orchid plants exactly like the original. The process assures the growers that every orchid plant will be healthy and bear top quality flowers. Cloning techniques are also being applied to trees. In California, the original stands of the giant redwood are rapidly disappearing. Researchers are helping reforest with a new breed of trees, faster growing, straighter redwoods with fewer branches than their ancestors. The breeding of super trees begins with the selection of the best tree in a stand. Twigs from the top of the tree are shot down and carefully gathered. Carbon copy redwoods are then grown in test tubes. Pieces of twig are planted in a special nutrient containing sugar, minerals, and growth promoting hormones. Within a few months, a batch of little cloned trees is ready for planting in the nursery. Within a year, reforestation can begin. In the last decade, cloning research has made awesome strides. Biologists use the cells of one axolotl, a large Mexican salamander, to create its clones. Eggs are taken from a white axolotl. Normally, they would be fertilized by different sperm and grown into different axolotls. But a stranger fate awaits these eggs. Their genetic information is destroyed. They will become carriers for genetic instructions from other axolotl cells. A spotted axolotl embryo becomes the source of these cells. It is picked apart into individual cells. What comes next is the very essence of animal cloning. The genetic information carrying nucleus of a cell is drawn into the pipette. 
the nucleus is transplanted into the unfertilized egg. Other cells from the same embryo, each carrying identical genetic instructions, can also be inserted in eggs. The results will be clones. The baby axolotls are born identical, spot for spot man-made clones of a single parent. If cloning were achieved for man, a single individual could create descendants in his own image. Extraordinary people might be copied in hope of benefiting society. But the process raises a frightful specter of individuality lost. It would be theoretically possible to produce an army of identical humans who might synchronize their brains, thoughts, and actions to become a master race. If human cloning became reality, a person could create his own younger identical twin. The prospect conjures up visions of a dozen identical prize athletes or a hundred facsimiles of some movie screen goddess. Human cloning, however, is not yet upon us. When biologists tried to use on mammals cloning methods developed for salamanders and frogs, they encountered formidable obstacles. Mouse or human eggs are delicate specks, much smaller than axolotl eggs. The operations of microsurgery can easily damage them. Dr. Clem Markert of Yale University is a pioneer in cloning research. His latest achievement is the creation of a mouse which has six parents. Starting with three pairs of normally mated mice, each with different coat color, Dr. Markert produced a three-colored patchwork female. This laboratory miracle was performed by putting together embryonic cells from the three matings. After joining, the cell groups synchronize, develop normally, and become one mouse instead of three. No one has ever cloned a mammal, but a few individuals at least have tried. And we're trying to develop the techniques for cloning mice right now and there are two different methods that we can use in attempting to clone mice, both of which involve a kind of microsurgery on mouse eggs. The process begins with a female whose eggs have been fertilized in the normal way. Her eggs are collected and prepared for microsurgery. At this early stage, genetic material from egg and sperm have not yet mixed. The mother's and father's genes are in two distinct sacs, called pronuclei. Dr. Markert deftly removes one of the pronuclei. Incubated in a special chemical, the remaining pronucleus replicates, restoring the normal amount of genetic material to the egg. It can now develop like any other mouse egg. A technician inserts the egg into the womb of a mouse who will bring it to term. When born, it will be a new type of animal, a female mouse descended from only one parent. But if the same steps were carried out for the next generation, science would produce cloned mice. If we repeat the procedure, then we would make clones of mice. And there's no technical or biological barrier to doing that right now. Experiments with single parent mice are continuing. Within a few years, Dr. Markert expects the first cloned female mice to be made by this indirect technique. 
If cattle could be cloned by first making single parent cows, the economic gain would be enormous. Dairy farmers could build whole herds of identical prize cows. Unlike humans, however, these animals have been bred to eliminate genetic defects. Human beings all carry a substantial burden of what we call recessive lethal genes, which if present in duplicate would cause us to die. So that if you began with a human egg and treated it the way we do the mouse egg, instead of it living and developing, it would surely die in nearly every case. Scientists, however, are working on another way to clone mammals, a method like that used to clone axolotl embryos. The second method involves putting a nucleus into the egg after you've previously taken its own nucleus out. This is more difficult. I can do this mechanically. I can insert the nucleus all right. The egg seems to heal up, but none of these have ever developed. What Dr. Markert is trying to do for the mouse has not yet been done for the axolotl. To begin with body cells from an adult animal and make an adult clone. The successful experiments with frogs and salamanders all begin with tadpoles and embryos, not adults. No adult animal has ever been cloned. But even if this barrier is hurdled, the road to human cloning presents obstacles of its own. The technical and logistic problems would be enormously magnified. I work with dozens or hundreds of mouse eggs, now most of which are going to die. To try to do anything like that with human beings would be very difficult. The notion of cloning, especially cloning human beings, certainly agitates people. If one were successful in cloning, say, an adult man, all you would in effect do would be to produce an identical twin of that man, but of a very different age. Now there are thousands of identical twins walking around on the surface of the earth. They all constitute small clones. And to produce a uh, Another set of identical twins of different age doesn't seem to me to be uh, anything that should agitate people. Identicals, however, may be more special than we realize. Even if we were thousands of miles apart, I could feel something coming on. I'd pick up the phone and my answer would be right there. And sister would have, her, she'd be ill or in some kind of trouble. And we can always feel this Color. Color. we can read each other's minds it's very strong very strong I think that they have the same brain thoughts the same waves they come up with the same answers I really believe that they think about each other the same thought at the same time if there were four or five or six of us seeing that we uh, twins are double power it would have been just absolutely marvelous. I think four or six would be a veritable landslide. Okay. But we'd have a veritable uh, clinic and we'd uh, have the whole town to ourselves probably. I'm not too worried about negative uh, results from cloning. Yeah, I think it's it's a, uh, a good thing that we are able to to improve the, the human race, if you will, and, and improve uh, certain characteristics maybe that uh, are desirable and eliminate uh, undesirable uh, uh, individuals and characteris characteristics, even though it may sound a little, uh, a little dangerous depending on who calls the shots. Many people are afraid that if cloning of human beings became possible, that the government would direct the process and produce individuals to the government's taste. What governments are interested in is the adult personality. And if you were to clone individuals, you'd still just begin with a group of children, the same genetic makeup as some preceding generation of adults, but you'd still have exactly the same problems of trying to discipline them, educate them, change them, or make them into the kind of adults you wanted to make them into. One of the reasons why many people are very worried about the possibility of cloning human beings is that they suffer from the illusion that genes determine character. And that's just not true. Dr. Markert and associates are continuing attempts to clone mice. 
Their progress manipulating eggs has attracted new researchers to the field, multiplying the chances of success. The cloning of human beings could soon be within reach. If human cloning comes, serious questions will have to be faced. Who will be singled out for duplication? Who will decide how many copies to make? Geneticists believe that intelligence is in part inherited. By cloning talented individuals, society could boost the mental power of the species. It is a prospect at once frightening and tantalizing. Whether used wisely or not, cloning could profoundly alter our destiny in the universe. If achieved, cloning would create genetically identical individuals. But if cloning became a common method of human reproduction, certain types might be overbred, and variety is essential to the survival and evolution of a species. Unless carefully controlled, cloning could potentially lead us toward evolutionary disaster. <laughs>